What's going on guys and in this video we're going to be talking about SMCI and is the fun over? <laughs> All right. So uh, without further ado let's go ahead and jump right in. This stock has gone from 1076 to closing at around $803. A significant drop. Is the fun over? <laughs> but before we actually start going into what I think is going to happen. Let's go ahead and use MarketSmith and figure out what really took place and actually how we you could have really caught on to how much funds and ownership were really starting to pour into this thing before this massive move took place. All right. So uh, with that said, I also do want to see if this is something that people should invest in on the long term. So we do have the handy dandy Excel sheet. And we're going to plug the numbers in to see if it's something that, you know, might be worth a look at back down towards, you know, 600, 500, 400 <laughs> and so forth. All right. So um, with that said, if you guys haven't done so already, go ahead and smash that like button. Subscribe to the video. I know most of you guys who are watching are probably brand new to the channel. So go ahead and subscribe. And let's get this thing started. All right. So. With that said, I want to start off by showing you guys how you could have used this tool to give you the ability to see how much funds and ownership were really pouring into this thing. Okay, so I'm going to flip here. I'm going to go to the weekly chart and I want you guys to really first and foremost see what really happened and what changed. All right. Before we even get into the institutional side of things, it's very clear and very easy to see Market, market search does a great job showing all the past earnings here, but it's very easy, uh, easily spotable here. If we take a look at the past earnings from March, June, September, and December, take a look at these numbers, guys, 200, 200, 490%, 200% EPS beat. This is a significant change on this company. All right. Um, obviously this is not something that was even on my radar at the time to even check the earnings report, but uh, for those of you guys that were possibly watching this, I just want to show you guys a few things. So this is March to December. This is when the stock was getting these significant numbers, right? Very under the radar at this point. Stock is sitting at around 40 to 80 bucks. In its time alone, it's moved up around 100%, right? From 40 to around $80. Um, so that right there is a little bit of a telltale sign. But what happens after this is very important as well. Okay, so if we compare, you know, what the funds were doing back when this earnings report or these numbers came out, that puts us where? That puts us right here, March, March, that's 2022nd. So let's go to March 2022nd right here till December 2022nd, right? So from March 2022 to December 2022, there wasn't really a significant increase in the fund ownership. There was, it went from 360 to 540, but that's in a, in a you know, four quarter period. Now, what really changes and what really takes place is from June to September, right? We really jumped up significantly here. Um, and if we're looking at this, you know, even at, at, if we're looking at this at June, the number has increased from 365 to 760, all right? So September, what, 1,000 funds and ownership in this thing. Now let's take a look at where September falls on the chart and of course, September falls in this category. Okay. Um, so from then, you know, consolidated, broke out and really took off from 400 all the way up to around 1000 to, you know, where we recently hit and then pulling back. All right. So just a little bit of an insight on how to really look at these things and try to get yourself or position yourself in a place before these things really take place. This could be a full on strategy that you can really start implementing um, to start seeing things like this, right? So you can build a whole system on this if you really choose to do so. All right. But with that said, let's go ahead and throw it in to the tracker, see what the tracker tells us. And if this is something that you should even consider at this point. All right. So EPS of 12 uh, PE is a little high here. Let's take a look at the return on equity. We're going to do that by looking at right here, 40% return on equity. So it's a positive figure right there. And from there, we're going to jump into Yahoo Finance. We're going to get the uh, financial numbers here so we can plug it into the Excel sheet. All right, let's get going here on this one. Um, so now we're going to look for total debt to total asset ratio. We're going to go to balance sheet. We're going to look at total assets. All right, we're going to plug that in. 
And then we're going to look at total debt. So let's come down here, look at total debt. Boom. So 0.26. So the total assets can pay off the total debt at least almost two and a half times. All right. Now we're going to look at current. <clears throat> so total current assets is right here. We're going to plug that right there. Then we're going to look at total current debt. Right. So total current debt is right here. And again, this is going to be a positive number, 2.3. Um, almost there. So over two times they can pay off their current debt. All right. Now let's look at operating income. We're going to go here to income statement. We're going to look at um, total operating income. That's obviously the trailing 12 months. So we're going to plug that in here. And then we're going to look at total revenue. We're going to put that there. And we got a 9% here. So this is the first red we've gotten on this name. Um, cash flow. Is it increasing or decreasing? We're going to come here to cash flow. Uh, and we're going to take a look at it and see what the numbers tell us. Minus 74, 64, minus 485, 626. A um, little bit of a wonky up and down, but just based on the last two quarters here, uh, or last two years here, I should say, uh, minus 485 to plus 626. Uh, let's go ahead and give that a positive number here. Uh, but I don't think it's really going to matter coming into the end here, and I'll tell you why. Um, <clears throat> owned by management. Let's go ahead and look at owned by management. So right here, management owns 18%. Management owns 18% of this. That's pretty significant. Uh, and then as fund ownership increasing or decreasing, of course, it's increasing. So um, we've gotten a pass on this. Um, and of course, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's tough because now it's given us a pass. And the thing is, you got to run these numbers well before this move takes place and that's why i proactively tell you guys uh or i've been proactively doing this series for you guys as the market pulled back right we want to see these passes we want to see these numbers when things were coming downwards right at this point you know you have a company that at least with a very close or very brief look at the financials it gives us a pass right but Technicals is also the other aspect that we look at. And that's why after every research that I do on these, we look at the technical side of it, right? So um, again, if you've followed the series, we've gone through quite a bit of names that, you know, have been on the pass list, right? So for example, one of those was Netflix that we did really early on, right? Net and I think that was at around 230. It's pushed up to 600. That was a pass. Uh, AMD was another one that we did on the series that actually was a pass that ended up doing really good. Um, Intel, Google, Meta, these are all names that got in passes on the list, right? So I'm gonna show them here to you and the, the ones we've done. So this was Netflix, um, this was AMD, this was Intel, Google, Meta. Um, we also had Tesla, this one not, not so hot so far, but Airbnb, take a look at Airbnb. <clears throat> Right. This one has made a decent move as well. Um, so it's really important to kind of look at these things uh, and see how well um, they're doing. And then really look at the technicals to understand if it's something that we want to buy or sell. We did Netflix again. Uh, we did NVIDIA again. Um, these ones, it's it's really important to, to do the numbers, guys. And um, I want everyone to be aware of that. So let's go back to SMCI and what's going on here. Obviously, we've significantly dropped... Um, if this is something that you guys find value in and you want to invest in, uh, I would definitely say wait. Maybe 400 is a place you can start to look at. Um, but obviously super extended at this point. Not something I will be touching anytime soon. Um, need to see this thing kind of breathe, come back. You know, if you guys have been trading and you're new to trading in the last two years, you've probably seen things like this happen and how quickly they come back down. But um, we need that to settle down, come back to earth, and then establish some numbers, possibly maybe around 400, um, 300, um, maybe even back down to where all the little volume profiles were, uh, depending on how much of these big hedge funds want to start selling. So um, that's that, guys. I hope you guys did find value in this. I really try to bring you guys as much information as I can so you guys can really understand how to make a sound fundamental decision on the stocks you want to invest in, for the long term at least. Um, and of course the other videos on this channel are targeted towards short-term day trading and making lucrative money in the stock market. All right, guys. So if you did find value in this, please go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, 
and comment down below what video you want me to do next, and I'll be more than happy to do it for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.